Yo, what's up guys? Today we're going to be going over the 10 best brawlers in Brawl Stars to level up right now. By the way, this is not at all in order. So if you have a favorite brawler that's more towards the end of the list, that's perfectly fine. Level it up. First up, we have Rico. I mean, Rico just recently got his hypercharge and he is absolutely insane. The hypercharge Rico is kind of like mutation Rico in a way where the balls are just kind of bouncing everywhere. But Rico's been good for a really long time, specifically on ladder, where there are a lot of really fun and really good Rico maps. I mean, anything with a lot of walls and good areas to bounce is obviously going to be really good for Rico. But with this new hypercharge, it's just absolutely insane. Then you stack that with the fact that the bouncy, not the healing gadget, but the damage gadget for Rico also just does a nuts amount of damage even after the nerf. Rico is going to be good, especially on ladder, for a very long time. He's really good in Brawl Ball, Gem Grab, Heist, and even Hot Zone. So you have four really fun modes that are always out in the game that you have an option to play Rico on definitely level him up. Next up, we have Sandy, and Sandy's been good for as long as I can remember. I mean, the fact that Sandy has three stuns, if you have the stun gadget, which you should 100% have, and then a invisibility sandstorm for the entire team just makes it a brawler that is never going to go away. Sandy's always been one of the best brawlers on Brawl Ball and is going to continue being one of the best brawlers on Brawl Ball. But then there are other modes, especially Gem Grab, where he's just an absolute menace. So, I mean, you forever have two modes that Sandy, no matter how bad Sandy's going to be, which he's never going to be bad is going to be very, very meta. On top of that, he's good into tanks because you get a lot of sandstorms, and he's also good into snipers because if you get one sandstorm, those snipers are completely dead. So Sandy's a very good brawler. Again, I 100% recommend leveling him up. Next up, we have Amber, and Amber's probably been the brawler for the longest amount of time that has been the best brawler in the game that does not have a hypercharge. So Amber's just really consistent. I mean, Amber's damage output is absurd. You could deal with crowd control, which is the best part about Amber 100%. But also, if there's a brawler like a Frank or a Primo coming at you, you also do enough damage to just one single target that you can also completely melt whatever tank is coming your way. Both star powers are pretty good and both gadgets are also pretty good. It's very important that you have the damage gear and either the shield plus one or health gear. Even speed is okay, but just make sure you have that damage gear because it does help Amber out a lot. Once Amber gets a hypercharge, which is probably going to happen a little bit later on, because just like brawlers like Stu or Hank, the ammo is like a little bit off and a little bit quirky to deal with. So once Amber gets a hypercharge, which is probably not going to be for a while, she is probably going to easily be the best brawler in the game. And you want her at max level when this comes out. So I would 100, 100, 100% recommend maxing out your Amber or at least leveling her up a little bit. Next up, we have Kit the Cat. Now, I know everyone hates Kit, but I love him. He's a really cool little cat. He does a lot. You could stun brawlers with him. You can go invisible with him. You can make him a thrower. You could jump over walls. Like, there's so much you can do with Kit. I personally love playing Kit. I don't know if that's going to make you all hate me, but I mean, if you guys don't have many coins and you can't even really afford star powers gadget plus two gears on a brawler, Kit is probably the brawler that I would recommend for you guys to level up. The reason I'd recommend it is because having the combination of gears and especially gadget and star power really boosts up a brawler and makes them really good. Like a level 10 brawler with nothing compared to a level 11 brawler that's maxed out properly with everything is a gigantic difference. It's basically the difference between level 6 and level 10. So having those additional pieces at the end are really important. For Kit, you don't really need a star power. Even on my mini account where I have like 25 max brawlers, I don't have a single star power on Kit because you just don't need it. Just make sure you have the invisibility box, aka cardboard box, aka call it whatever you want gadget on Kit. And then also just make sure you have the shield gear and that's literally all you need to be a successful Kit player. Kit is good in literally every single mode in the game, so you're definitely going to get your coins worth if you level him up. It's going to be a good experience just not for the other players. All right, next up is going to be Meg. So Meg obviously got a rework, kind of like Rico, where Meg is just mutation for Meg. And I don't know if I like this version of Meg right now, but it looks like she is going to stay around for a long time. Definitely max her out as she is easily the best brawler in the game. And even with a nerf, she's still probably going to be an insane anti-tank at the very least. I mean, she does an insane amount of damage. She has semi-decent range and the exploding star power is just like it does so much damage so you can go up to someone and do a ton of damage with meg with the super whack with the normal shots and then just explode for like 2000 damage right in their face knock them back like nothing can kill you meg is insane so if you're gonna you know if you want one brawler that is the very best brawler in this meta it's meg level her up 
Easy wins guaranteed. Next up, we have Angelo. Angelo recently got his hypercharge, and you guys already know in the last meta that Angelo was the best brawler in the game. He recently got a nerf, so I don't think he's going to get too much of a nerf anymore, and he's still really, really good. So what's so good about Angelo? A, he's a sniper that does 4,000 damage. What snipers do 4,000 damage? Well, Piper was ambush at max level. Nani if you hit all three shots. A Mandy super. And... I guess, and Angelo, if I'm missing something, guys, I'm so sorry, and maybe I'm not a Brawl Stars pro, but I swear those are the only things that do above 4,000 damage as a sniper, and all of those are the three highest tier of snipers in the game. So, Angelo's in that class, but then Angelo can also be really good, you know, face-to-face, -face, because you can do 4,000 damage from up close as well, which obviously something like a Piper cannot do that, or a Mandy can't go too aggro, and something that only... Piper has is Angelo can also jump away but then another cool thing is you know Angelo could also jump on water or walk on water not jump on water so I mean Angelo can kind of do it all it looks like he's going to be meta for a really long time so if you like snipers specifically Angelo is the brawler for you upgrade that mosquito he is going to be very good for a very long time. Next up, we have Colette, and Colette is one of the most fun anti-tank brawlers in the game. Both star powers are good. You can go push at Colette, which I prefer because it's a little bit more fun. Or, you know, shield Colette. The gadget, the healing gadget is so important. Please make sure if you're getting one single thing on Colette, you get the healing gadget because it is so good against tanks. You can be 1,000 HP, hit a Frank one time, you're full HP. You know, it's absolutely insane. And it's just so good as an anti-tank, so I would highly recommend leveling up your Colette. Because Colette's never going to go away as an anti-tank. Colette's never going to go away as meta in Heist. So you can guaranteed 100% have a brawler that's going to be absolute meta in Heist and very good against every tank. So good on tank maps forever. So level up your Colette. She is a lot of fun. I really enjoy playing her. And if you're going to fully level her up, get push it star power or the shield. Doesn't really matter. Get the healing gadget and then get damage and speed star power or gear. Sorry, not star power. And you should be set. Next up, we have Frank. And I mean, you guys know why to level up Frank. I mean, Frank already got his nerf, so he's not going to get too big of a nerf next update. I think he is going to get one, but not too big of a nerf. So if you're very cautious about spending your coins, I would probably hold back on this one. But at this very current mo moment, you guys already know. I mean, Frank is like the best brawler in the game. And besides Meg. And he does crazy damage. He swings crazy fast. And he's good just about everywhere now. Especially with the noise canceling gadget that I 100% recommend getting. So if you want something to be good right this very second. Level up your Frank. Because he is insane. And I don't really have too much more to say. Because I'm sure you guys have seen 10 Frank YouTube videos by now. You guys already know everything about Frank. Let's keep this video moving. Now, this is a little bit of a cheeky one, but next up we have Nita. Now, if you like playing spawnable brawlers, Nita has been good for a very long time. Nita is going to continue being good for a very long time. She isn't a broken brawler, but it's only five hits for super, which is pretty easy against basically everything with Nita. Um, she's very good on heist if you have hyper bear. Heal Bear is very good in Brawl Ball. Like, there's a lot of different ways to play Nita, but she seems to consistently be good enough to always get wins. And also, at the low levels in Ladder, it's super easy to win games with Nita. So, 100% recommend leveling her up because you can at least get her to level 10 and probably about 600, 700 trophies very, very easily. I know most people's highest brawlers are usually between Shelly and Nita. So, I'm sure a lot of you guys already have a high level Nita, but if you don't, I do recommend. So now last, we have the brawler that's most nearest and dearest to my heart. No, we're not talking about Kit the Cat. No, we're not talking about my lady, Piper. We are talking about my boy, Gene. Gene is an absolute menace, and he is always going to be meta in Knockout. He's always going to be meta in Bounty, and he is always, always, always going to be grabbing people with all the gems and being meta as a gem grab mid. So you have three places already, three different modes, completely different modes, where Gene is going to be the utmost meta brawler. Like, he's going to be absolutely insane, and there is no going away. Now, the thing with Gene is Gene is kind of costly if you want to make him really good. First off, you have the healing star power, which is required. You need to have the healing star power because it's a lot of value that you're missing with Gene if you don't have that. Next up, you need to have the mythic gear. Like, you need it. The gene pull is so much longer with the mythic gear. You 100,000% need to have that gear loaded on. 
And then lastly, you need to have the vision gear because Gene, like the shots are so easy to hit and you just need to hit one little shot. You need that vision gear. So if you have a lot of coins, Gene is one of the ones I would 100% recommend upgrading. But if not, I would probably avoid upgrading Gene because he is a little bit costly. That's going to be it for my video. If you guys enjoyed this type of video of knowing what to level up, then definitely let me know. And I could do like a, you know, top 10 brawlers to not level up to save you guys some coins. So that's going to be it for today. If you guys enjoyed, like, comment, subscribe, and I will be back again soon. Peace.